back to Rambling Runoff, a sports podcast for the sports news I think you need to hear. Yes, yes, I am your host, Robert Rios, coming to you on the ones and twos once again on a gorgeous spring day, I might add, in which, yeah, we'll be uh, going over some sports stuff that, you know, I I think more or less is uh, important for everyone to listen to and hear. But before we get into that, let me introduce you, my guest host for today's show. Once again, coming back hot and ready with all his notes that I know he has prepared. Everyone, give a round of applause, unless you're driving, for Mr. Danny Tan. Danny, say what's up to the people. What up, everybody? Glad to be back. Man, yeah, thank you. Thank you for uh, joining us once again. Uh, like I said, we got a, a lot of stuff to unpack today. We're going to be going over Danny's favorite topic. Uh, so the NBA playoffs are underway. Uh, we're going to go over some baseball, some MLB update. Hopefully, we don't crash and burn there. Uh, in the warm-up, I'll be going over some UEFA Champions League news, another update there. And then, if you stick around to the rundown, we will be going over a bunch of stuff. So, make sure you uh, are buckled in or chilling, relaxing. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, start the show. But uh, Danny, what you been up to? How have you been? Not much. I've been watching a lot of basketball. Everything's been so fun to watch. Um, yeah, not much other than that. What about you, Robert? I mean, nothing much as well. I mean, same as you, basically watching some basketball here and there. Some foodie, of course. Um, I think that's mm. it, basically. I'm trying to catch up on some hockey as well because the playoffs in the NHL have begun. But uh, other than that, no, nah, nothing much. I don't know. Have you been gone golfing or um, read a good book or I don't know? No, no golf. I I did go to Universal Studios over the weekend. That was pretty fun. Oh, okay, I, uh, that's cool. I took a peek into Nintendo Land. It was chock full of people, so I couldn't even get into that area. But um, it looked cool from afar. Oh, okay. I mean, I mean, it wasn't too recent, but I did go to Knotts. If that counts as anything. Oh. Pretty cool. No, yeah, it was cool. I got to go see the homie Snoop. Oh, Snoop Dogg, D-O-double-G. Well, not that Snoop, but close enough. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a good time as well. Uh, it was a little packed. There was, like, some event going on, and we did did a few things there. But, uh, yeah, it was a good time as well. That's awesome, man. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I, what I was going to try to do was low-key was uh, – record like a game that i would play but it was kind of too packed to play any game so i just ended up playing because the only good game that i was good at at knots at knots berry farm was um they used to have a frisbee game which i don't know if you remember i used to be a little bit handsy with frisbees back in the day oh yeah so unfortunately there is no more frisbee game at knots berry farm i think maybe too many people were winning (laughs) oh because i think i think what the problem was is basically basketball but with the frisbee and i don't think the frisbees were like plasticky enough for that for people not to just chuck them oh i see what you mean but when i went they still had like a shit ton of prizes so i'm like uh why did they i'm like did like people start winning like they get hacked is that what happened or was it just not like a a viable game for them to continue running yeah no i see what you mean but it's it's insane they're charging like 15 bucks for you to play or whatever 10 bucks yeah it's like like 12 bucks i think yeah those toys are like they get them for like pennies. Like I mean, just have it there, you know. They got squishmallows. That's the only good prize they have there. Yeah, I mean, they get it <laughs> so cheap. Like, why not just have it? They have to pay for the ticket to get in anyway. No, oh, yeah, have it for fun. Who cares? That's no, because the yeah, I, they had a like a like a food like a food festival, the boysenberry festival. So I bought I bought uh, us like like the food, not food stamps, but like yeah. the food cards. And we mm, ended up purchasing another one because we wanted more food. So it was like basically oh, yeah. ten bucks. A sample, well, not a sample, but like the food was pretty good and it was a uh, decent portions. So like you could share it between oh. two people. Nice. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Did you play any games at uh, Universal? Um, I was gonna do the basketball shoot, but it was eighteen bucks just to shoot, and I was like, oh, eighteen bucks. Look, even if I win the biggest toy there, the biggest goddamn stuffed animal, it's not worth it. Like eighteen bucks, like come on, I'll spend that doing something else. <laughs> Ridiculous. I shoot at home. Yeah, there you go. And then yeah. you you imagine you won a prize. Yep. <laughs> yep. I won just by getting out there. Nice. But uh yeah, I mean I'm glad you had a, a good time out there. Um is there anything else you would like to add for the people to know out there? 
Uh, hope you guys got your taxes done. <laughs> there you go. I mean, I got mine done. Yeah, me too. But yeah, file your extensions if you haven't already. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. You're a fool. But uh, yeah. <laughs> um, is everybody prepared to uh, go into some sports talk? Danny, are you ready to uh, give us your professional insights on the NBA once again? But this time for like twenty minutes. How about that? Yeah, let's get it. All right. So, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, starting into rambling runoff, we are talking with the NBA playoffs with uh, Danny Tan here. So, Danny, last week we, we didn't do a regular show. Uh, we got a little bit busy, which is why we only did a podium show, in which that's why it was Danny's first time on the podium. Um, we just talked about pure NBA nonstop. And, uh, Danny, um, one of your picks did not come true. I'd like to point that out. Yep. I know. The Pelicans I know. fell very short to um, Ridiculous. To Ridiculously the short. I mean it didn't really matter anyway because you had the you had the Pelicans losing. Yeah. <laughs> right after uh, that. Oh, so Oh, you mean uh the the Thunder. No 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 well no, you had the Pelicans going up against uh Denver, right? It's not what uh, you had. Oh yeah, you're right, right. Yeah. So either way, I mean it doesn't really matter at the end. Yeah. Yeah, because even even if you're saying if they got to the first round, they would have made an early first round exit. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So I'm I'm trying to make you not feel too bad. No, that's all right. Because I, I literally said you better not be making any ghost feature predictions and having them not happen. And literally we record <laughs> literally we recorded that and they lost. Yeah, I mean you buffoon. They should have won. That game should have been theirs. Jonas Valanciunas is such a big guy. It should have been their game. So literally walk away with. But it didn't. I know. <laughs> that young team, man. Such a bright future. Oh well. But um but yeah, other than that um slight error that Danny made, uh everything else is uh running smoothly. Uh we're just kinda gonna kinda go over our thoughts on what's happened. As of this recording, there are a few games going on. There's been games that have been going on. Um but uh yeah, Danny, um what can you tell us about the last couple of days in regards to the start of the 2023 uh nba playoffs yeah so um since the beginning of the playoffs the playoffs kicked off with uh four games on saturday those games being the uh i believe it was the celtics or you know what let me pull it up just to be the playoffs started on, on sunday on s- playoff started on saturday good sir no they didn't yes they did okay i guess they did I think I'm just thinking of the Laker game then. <laughs> yeah, I think you're at the game of the Laker game. Okay. Playoff started on Saturday with the Philadelphia 76ers and the Brooklyn Nets facing off, followed by the Hawks and Celtics, the Cleveland Cavaliers, and the New York Knickenbockers. And finally, the Sacramento Kings and the Golden State Warriors. Yeah, so we had a state of four games on, on excuse me, four games on Saturday. Uh, we had a very typical Sixers Nets matchup um, with uh, the favorite Sixers winning handedly. Um, Embiid was getting a little frustrated every time he touched the ball. There, the Nets were doubling him, um, which is to be expected. You got to stop that big giant MVP. Um, I hope he's MVP. He's not declared MVP yet, but maybe in the next couple of days we'll hear it. Um, yeah, then sadly to say. The same thing happened in the second game. Hawks Celtics. Celtics won handedly, um, embarrassingly for the Hawks. They did give up nearly a 30 point point lead um, in the half and into the third quarter. But that second half for the Hawks went quite well, I should say, bringing it back um, with the game ending in a score of 99 to 112. Um, Then we had probably the tightest matchup um, in the East. The Cavaliers versus the Knicks. Um, it was a very back and forth game, very exciting. Um, Jalen Brunson really showing who he is. You know, able to take it to the rack, shoot from afar, um, just do everything that he can to to get the ball in the hoop. Um, the Cavs having Evan Mobley and Darius Garland making their first playoff appearance. Um, they did very well, I would say, for their for the first game. Um, the Cavs got kind of cold from three, um, and the Knicks. Really got hot um, for the second and uh, third quarter, but 
Um, the Cavs were able to hang in there up until the very end um, with uh, the Knicks taking it away from the Cavs in the first game. Um, the Cavs are losing their home court advantage 101 to 97. Finally, on Saturday, the most exciting game. It was like a final series, game one. Golden State Warriors versus Sacramento Kings. Game one in Sacramento. I don't know if you're able to catch a little bit of this game, Robert, but it was incredible. Uh, just like we expected, it was a three-point shootout from both the Kings and the Warriors. Steph Curry versus De'Aaron Fox. You know, Two sharpshooters. De'Aaron Fox this year missed the fourth quarter. Um... Demonte Sabonis really going crazy um, defensively and getting offensive boards. He he was held to only a handful of points um, in that first game. But, wow, it was a match to see. They were really going shot for shot, back and forth, back and forth. Um, some steepers were going to state. Uh, Dr. DiVincenzo, he played great for uh, about 20 minutes that he was in there. Uh... Andrew Wiggins made his uh his reappearance in uh, in the NBA, dropping 17 points. Curry did Curry things, dropping 30. Thompson with 21. You know, it it was just a, a great back and forth game. Um, and the I would say the MVP for that first game would be Trey Lyles. Uh, he came off the bench and did did great things defensively. Um. Another great player coming off the bench, Malik Monk, dropping 32 on him. Man, man. Kevin Herter, sharpshooter, man. Those those Kings, they're doing great for uh, their first playoff appearance in 16 years. Man, were you able to catch any of these games, Robert? I was able to catch the ending of the Golden State Sacramento Kings game, which just seeing like the last like couple minutes was already a nail biter. I mean, what? Oh the, my goodness! I mean, the it game was amazing. Only, I mean, the, the, it was only a three score ended it. It was only a three-score game at the end. Yep. So that's I was like, okay, like that was close. And then, let me see where's that. You said the Cavs were going to outplay the Knicks. And look what happened. The Knicks won the first game. As of, the, yeah. as of this recording, the the Cavs are, are starting to get, get one over on the Knicks now. But uh, look, see, I said it wasn't going to be easy. And, yeah, I saw that your your Hawks were, were struggling out there against the Celtics. So um, oh, no. we'd have yep. to see how they do in their next next matchup oh um, yeah as of this recording that game has just wrapped up by the way the hawks losing to the boston celtics 119 to 106 um so they give up a 2-0 lead and they're heading to atlanta and uh what day is that game on and what time is it at danny uh, the very next game Nash Cowan, should I'll, be I'll look it up for you <laughs> on thursday i believe and Let me see. i don't know what time it is but actually i will tell you no it's on friday actually on Friday. Game Step 3, back. Boston leads 2-0. Two, two zero. So Friday, yeah. April 21st. 7 p.m. Eastern. 4 p.m. Pacific. And you yep. can catch it on ESPN. But uh, where do you see this series going? I mean, Atlanta, they're going to do their best to, to take the two at home to make it a 2-2 series. Um, I can see Boston possibly stealing one away. Um the Hawks have just been playing a little bit more sloppy basketball. I mean, the Boston Celtics are a top defensive team, but they have been getting you know pretty frustrated with the zone defense. Um, the normal transition, uh, transition offense, and um, their new faster pace that they picked up um, after playing Miami in the play-in has been working out for them. Um, in spurts, it has. With a little bit of a cooler head, their their half court sets are doing, they're doing okay. But I think the the Boston defense is really frustrating them. Uh, Trey Young, I think you know he's still putting up twenty points a piece, um, but you can see the frustration. You see the turnovers. You know it's bad passes. It's driving in, stopping, and then staring, looking for an exit option when you know there should be a plan from the beginning. You know. You know, there's a handful of times where I see his drive have a wide open trail behind him. You know, someone should be rotating up or off the pick and roll, or the high screen pick and roll with the smaller guy. Um, Clint Capella could could even do a double pick um, up top. 
just a free up a shooter and have a a good pass for Trey to have. But um, I think they're going to figure that out. Uh, Quinn Snyder is a great head coach. Um, they'll figure it out in Atlanta. So I don't see Boston taking game three. Um, game four might be stolen, but hopefully it ends up in a 2-2 by, uh, I believe it's on Sunday. By Sunday, it'll be 2-2. Yes, game four is on Sunday. That is on TNT at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Yes. But um, who, well, who do you think is going to win it, though? Uh, I mean, if I I'm mean, being quite honest, it's probably going to be Boston. Yeah. I hate I to mean, say it, but um, they're, they're just a favorite. Higher seed, stronger defensively. Great offensive options in Tatum and Brown, um, and they're just bigger, longer. Um, yeah, it's just it's a tough matchup for the Hawks in the first round. I mean, yeah, that that first game, one twelve to ninety nine, is not a good looking scoreline. Yeah, no. Um, neither is the next one, one hundred six to one nineteen. You know, thirty point difference. You no, know, at one point in this fourth quarter, it was down to eight. Bogdan Bogdanovich had a a great handful of uh, plays to bring it down to eight, but you know, it just got away from them. Um. Yeah, man, that's all I gotta say. I'm just sad. Hoping uh, they're able to put up a fight and make it a a six game series, but we'll see how it is. It is what it is, Danny. Yep. But um, um yeah. What, were you gonna add anything else? No, I was actually gonna move on to the next handful of games. Oh, okay, can I do that one? Oh yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um yeah, so that was the the Saturday slate. Uh, Danny went over a. Uh, one of the, the key games that he caught his eye. Uh, on Sunday, mm-hmm. uh, we had the Lakers playing against the Grizzlies, in which the Lakers won 128 to uh, 112. Then we also mm-hmm. had the Heat beat the Bucks 130 to 117. Then the other LA team, uh, the Clippers, beat the Suns 115 to 110, which was a close game as well. Mm-hmm. And then finally, we had the Denver Nuggets beating the Timberwolves 109 to 80. So, yeah. I was able to see some of the Clippers Suns game, and like I said, it was a, a back and forth affair. Um, I mean, that's like it basically. I mean, I don't, I don't know how much more to tell you. Um, just to uh, go over some of the stat lines from that game for the the box score, you had um, is it Nathan Nathan Batum? No, Nicholas Batum. Uh, three points. Nicholas Batum. Batum and Kawhi Leonard, uh, thirty eight points. Uh, how do you say this was name? Ev Evak Zubak Zubak twelve points. Oh Zubak, yeah. And then uh, Westbrook, S- tri- um, being the second to lowest scorer with nine points. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then um, Eric Gordon, as a start off on, as a starter, had nineteen points. Uh, off the bench, we had a uh, Norman Powell with not fourteen points. So. It was a decent shooting, um, a shooting outing for the for the Clippers. Uh, on the other hand, for the Suns, you had Kevin Durant with twenty seven, uh, Torrey Craig with twenty two, DeAndre Ayton. Is that how you say it, Danny? Yep, DeAndre Ayton. Yep, eighteen points. Uh, Chris Paul with seven. The heck, seven points. I mean, he had ten assists. I guess played for thirty nine minutes. Kind of, kind of bad. And then uh, Mr. Devin Booker ended the night with, uh, what is it? And I lost my... 26. 26 points, thank you. And then their bench, I think their bench is what failed them. Because they got... Yeah. Four. They got... 10 points. 10 points, two assists. That That's yeah. dog water, Danny. Yeah. Um, I think that game really showed how deep the Clippers were, even without Paul George. Um. Yeah, I think Kevin Durant, you know, he played well, but, you know, he could have been better, you know. Yeah. You got so many shooters and uh, so many offensive options um, in that first starting five for the Phoenix Suns. You you would think one of them would hit 30. Um, the bench may be contributing 20, 25 points. But, yeah, the Clippers really showed Kawhi Leonard put on a clinic, you know, dropping 38 on them, 38, 5, and 5. Half of the steals. Um, or, or excuse me, just one steal. Um, Norman Powell really lit him up off the bench. I mean, it, 
it was just a great showing for for the Clippers. Yeah, like you said, a really back and forth game. Russell Westbrook, even though he didn't contribute much points wise, uh, eleven rebounds, eight assists, three steals, or sorry, two steals, three blocks. I mean, he he was a defensive monster when they needed it the most. Um, he had two very uh, momentous free throws um, in the end. He was able to, on the play where Phoenix had to tie, he was able to steal the ball, get it away from Devin Booker, throw it off of him, and keep the possession uh, to go the other way. You know, an immense play from Russell Westbrook. It really showed, you know, even when he's not shooting well, this is what Russell Westbrook can do. You know, this is what he can do without toxic Laker fans, you know, hounding him up and down, hearing all these things here and there. Like, if he's shooting bad, oh well. He still double-doubled, you know. Or, excuse me, he was right next to a double-double. Um, and, you know, almost triple-double, you know, one point away, two assists away from triple-double. Mr. Triple-double. You know, the, the Clippers just really showed how deep they were. Yeah, they have a, a better bench, but in regards to your uh, Westbrook comment, I mean, he was still bad, Danny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, he was bad at shooting, but just like Pat Bev, just like Jerry Vanderbilt, um, Alex Caruso, uh, Draymond, these guys, they're not <clears throat> they are not offensive threats. Russell Westbrook is much more of an offensive threat, don't get me wrong, but in this role with the Clippers, when he's not shooting well, He's able to do all those other things that make him Russell Westbrook still. You know, he's frustrating the the other team, getting blocks. Um, I mean, he really had Katie's number um, for a couple of uh, of plays uh, and earlier in the court or earlier in the in the game. You know, he he knows the way that Katie shoots, especially when he tries to go baseline. Uh, this is in this game. He he made. I think it's going to be his signature throughout the series. Um, he made a sneaky. Uh, sneaky block by running behind Kevin Durant as he went baseline uh, to shoot over the defender. And this is like the fourth time that he's done that um, since they've met so after after their, uh, their split from OKC. He just knows KD and he knows the shot he wants to take when he goes baseline running uh, on the strong side. And I, I think Westbrook is just an incredible player still. But, you know, even when he's not shooting well, he did great. I mean, how can you argue that, Robert? He was so close to a triple double. Consistency, Danny. That's the key thing here. Consi consistency, impact on the game, even when he's not shooting well. You know, trusting your teammates to make that the shots that you can't, and affect the game in other ways. And he did exactly that, and that's why the Clippers won. No, yeah, of course, that's what you would always want. But like, you get, but you get what I'm saying. That's why you had, yeah, Laker fans. Asking for his head because like okay like yeah you're saying he's good. he can do all these good things like he's impactful but it's not all the time yeah it isn't all the time but I think those the the shooting woes were highlighted because no one in the Lakers could make a shot in his tenure there and he was the one that no, was shooting he, most yeah he was shooting most because who else is gonna shoot the ball no one else could buy a shot while he was there in L.A. Yeah, I know, but it made a bad situation look worse. Yeah, but it, it it it's exactly what it is, right? But I think the LA fan base is wrong for doing what they did to Russell Westbrook. No, you know, they, no, you're tripping. No, no, we, I mean, we talked about it when that team was put together. You know, we talked about how old that team was, and potentially they could have been great, but yeah. they were so old, no one was playing efficiently, and I think unfairly. It all got put on Westbrook. Carmelo Anthony didn't get this much heat. I mean, he did well because he, he wasn't playing. Like, yeah, and he's but early in that season, they they had nearly the same efficiency. Carmelo Anthony just seemed to be making more shots because he wasn't taking as many. Yeah, he was making right? less mistakes, Danny. Yeah, well, there's there's more mistakes to be made when you're the guy who has to make the plays. West Westbrook as a guard, right, as a point guard. Come on, man. Yeah, man, just, you're just a typical don't... Lakers fan, man. Blame me now, Russell Westbrook. Shut up. Get on out of right. here, man. Yeah, you get on here. No, 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 you're not right. No, you're wrong. Rest, look, you, we're, we're seeing what Westbrook could have been yeah. on the Staker teams if they used him correctly. Like, we, even we, when he has a bad shooting night, he's affecting the game the in other shit. ways. 
No, he's not. Dude, Eleven rebounds, eight assists on a bad shooting night. Oh my god! It was rare for him to do that in LA. Yeah, and it's very rare for him to do it now. That's what I'm saying. Like, all right, one time. You're gonna see it. I need it more than one time, Danny. Yeah, the, you're. We're literally only looking at one game. I know, but, but you're praising him like, if he's like Jesus of Nazareth or something, like coming back. No, like, I'm saying this is the about? Westbrook that this is the Westbrook that people pay to see. This is the Westbrook that the Clippers wanted. They paid for. You know, they were disappointed when he first came out to the the Clippers and they went on a four game losing streak. But even then, he was he, he had double digit rebounds uh, on those games. He had at least five assists on most of those games, and his his shooting was still not where it is and where it used to be. But he's affecting the game in other ways as a defensive dog, and as somebody that is able to make plays despite you know the opponent's defense really having their number in that half court. And you know you're just a doubter, man. Nah, nah. But um, you're a doubter. No You'll see. Mark my words, in this series, you will see Russell Westbrook make his appearance and make his name known he is back. All right, Mr. We'll Triple-Double. To... All right, we'll have to wait and see if he or he's a, a Rajon Rondo wannabe or if he's just a flop. Yeah. Uh, anyways. I want to quickly go oh, over you yesterday's games. Just real quick, just yeah. a couple of the scores. 76ers take a 2-0 game lead or series lead. Against the Brooklyn Nets, ninety six to ninety four, and another stunner, great game, Sacramento Kings and Golden State. The Kings take both home games, leading the series two zero with a score of one fourteen to one oh six. Um, a little bit of controversy. Uh, Draymond Green stepping, stomping on Demontis Sabonis. Sabonis definitely grabbing his leg too, but two bad plays don't make one play. One of the bad, bad decisions, right? Um, Draymond Green definitely stomped on him. All right, ready to move on. Oh, I was gonna ask you one more question. What's up? So just, just pick one more series from any East or West doesn't matter. One series. Which one? Which one? Also catches your attention, basically. And where uh, do you think it's gonna go? Another series that catches my attention. Um, are you saying a great game to watch or great series to watch? Yes. Or all right, great series to watch. Um, definitely Kings Warriors. That's a great series to watch. Um, Clippers Suns, another very fun series in the West. Oh, I said in the pick East. One. Okay, sorry. I said okay, pick so one. <laughs> I will pick one. If you're gonna watch anything in this first round, watch the Kings Golden State. Okay, that's the most fun series to watch. Um, tons of shooting, tons of threes, great inside paint play, um, great defense all around. Watch that. There you go. But uh, yeah, um, just to start rounding up everything, uh, you catch most of these playoff games either on NBA TV, uh, TNT, uh, ESPN, ABC, and I think that's most of the broadcasting networks that are hosting all the games. I'm um, looking at most of them. They're really like at well, oh no, yeah, I think believe I believe these are all Eastern times. Yeah, seven p.m., ten p.m. 9 p.m. games. So, yeah, you'll be able on the weekend to catch a couple games a little earlier. Uh, maybe yeah. 1 p.m. Eastern, um, 12 p.m. But yeah. yeah, that's what I'm seeing. Oh, yeah, the one 1 p.m. game that I'm seeing is the Sixers and at Nets on TNT on April 22nd. So, but yeah, um, just look up ESPN, Fox, I don't know, CBS. Look up the schedule for the NBA. Go on NBA.com. Look up the schedules. They'll show you. Everything you need to know in regards to the NBA playoffs, and yeah, you should be set in regards to scheduling and what games to check out. Or you can come to Rambling Runoff and hear me and Dan talk about it as well. Please do. But uh, Dan, do you have anything else to add? No, I mean it's been an exciting round one so far. A um, couple of sad injuries. Um, Tyler Hero broke his hand. John Morant hurt his hand. Oh yeah, I saw that. And Giannis. Antetokounmpo uh, with a back contusion. Yeah, he's um, up so in Hopefully here. all those guys are healthy. Um, Tyler Hero will likely be out for the rest of the playoffs. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, I'm hoping for an injury-free playoffs, but likely won't happen. But um, I'd like to see all the teams uh, play each other uh, at their strongest with everybody healthy. 
Oh yes, of course. Uh, quick recovery to everybody. But uh, moving on now, Danny, are you prepared? Hello, are you live? Yes. Okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Moving on now in quick succession as well. I hope you're ready to talk about your second favorite sport, which is right now at the moment not soccer because I said so. Yes. And we haven't talked about this in a while because I, I mean, we've been doing. A lot of soccer, a lot of basketball, you know, more of our, our own forte. Boxing as well. Um, and even <laughs> college basketball, of all things, somehow. But Major League Baseball, I know, uh, I think I did like a quick opening opening day, opening series uh, in preview on an episode a while back. But uh, yeah, I know we haven't done any baseball in a while. I know, Danny, you know, a little bit of baseball, which is okay, Danny. It's fine. It's all good in the hood. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to um, kind of get back into it. I mean, like, personally, I, I love me some baseball. It's just kind of hard to elaborate on it when, like, there's a ton of games going on. And, I guess, I mean, you hear us. We're being very enthusiastic about the NBA playoffs. So, it's kind of hard to uh, get into it and focus on all of them, of course. I mean, it's just me and Danny. There's just too many sports. I mean, yeah, basically. But, uh, I mean, I'm just going to go run through some where where the table sits right now in, in regards to the AL and the NL and uh, who's on top and I guess kind of give my opinion here and there and see what Danny can chime in a bit. I mean, I love me some baseball, like I said. It's just hard to follow, but um, I guess we'll get into it now. Uh, in the American League is where I'll start off. Uh, the Tampa Bay Rays were undefeated for like a hot minute. I think they went 13-0. and And then I don't know what happened. I'm looking at the standings right now where they currently sit first in the American League East. Uh, fifteen and three, uh, they are ahead of the Yankees, who are ten and six. Then we have Toronto at ten and seven, and trailing behind them is Baltimore and Boston. Ba- the Orioles at nine and seven, and Boston at eight and nine. Which it's going to probably be another struggling year for Boston if they keep this um, keep this momentum going at this pace. Because I think what I think they I think they had just barely missed the playoffs last year. And I think they had barely made it into the wild card game not so long ago. I'm forgetting when they played the Yankees in that one wild card matchup. But it's going to be a tight one again. Uh, Tampa Bay, I mean, I'm just going to say it straight up. They're a small market. They play at, at Tropicana Field, a stadium that's just dog water for just being honest here. They don't even open up the second deck if they don't even reach a, capa- a certain capacity. I don't know if you knew that, Danny. If you go look up Tampa Bay Rays Stadium, there's a... a a second deck up in the roof that for a majority of the games is just empty, which I think I was told and researched on that the year I think they were only open for the American League final and just World Series because they know it's gonna sell out. In which they've yeah. gone to the World Series and they've gone to the finals or they've gone deep into the playoff run deep into the playoffs and you never get a chance to open it up. So who knows? Maybe this is this year. This is it, and they'll finally get to uh, open up that second deck. But I mean, yeah, fifteen and three, right out the gate. I mean, it's pretty good. Uh, moving on now in the AL, we got the Central. Um, you got the Minnesota Twins uh, going in at first, ten and six. Guardians at nine and nine. Uh, Tigers seven and nine. White Sox six and eleven, and the Royals coming in struggling out the gate four and thirteen. Um, it looks like Carl. Was in Carlos Correa's having a good time out in Minnesota, even though he almost ended up as a Giants and he almost ended up as a Yankee apparently, but uh, apparently no one wanted him because of a physical, and it was just weird that his physical didn't pass by, uh, in those two other teams, but it passed by in Minnesota where he was already playing. So uh, you're telling me he was already playing hurt? All right, I guess so. But uh, yeah, I guess the Minnesota Twins are are doing good in these times. Uh, the Guardians, I'm um, surprised, are starting out pretty good. I think last year they were struggling as well. But we'll have to wait and see once we get into the summer on how well they're doing. Uh, in the AL West, we got the Texas Rangers out of all teams. Um, starting out good at 10-6. and 6. Behind them, we got the Angels, Astros, Mariners, and then... hey ay ay Danny. These damn oh. Oakland Athletics. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yep. <laughs> Even Dan, Danny don't even watch baseball. And he knows he knows what's going on, dude. Dude, they get no people at their games. They're last yeah, place it's... in the West. 
at it's so three, sad. And, three yeah. and 14. It's literally the last legs of that stadium, and they cannot get people in those seats. I mean, they're they're playing poorly. Like, they're not even doing money ball anymore. They're just literally just... I think what it is right now, they're going to tank as hard as they can. They're going to tank as no one's ever tanked before. Because I've been seeing rumors. It's either they're going to move to Las Vegas. Or I saw another rumor last week. They're gonna, they might move to Salt Lake. Which man, would be interesting. Another team stolen. Going to Las Vegas, man. Because they're willing to throw the money. Yep. And the, the funnier thing too, I think it'd be really cheap. Like for example, in the MLS, they had a, a bid... Or a rumored bid from someone in the Vegas area. I don't, I don't know. Some I'm forgetting who it was, but obviously these people have a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And he was about to invest, but I mean, I think the the buy-in for an MLS franchise, or at least to invest into the MLS, is like three hundred million right now, four hundred million. And yeah, that's like I mean, that's for the team, that's for the stadium and whatnot. And he's well, like, you know. It just makes for those work. with money. That's like nothing. No, I know, but even he was like, "That's a bad investment." Yeah, I mean, because three hundred million I mean, is a lot of money, still. Yeah, a lot of money. You know, I'm thinking about it in terms of NBA teams. I don't know, but because they have such a great revenue um, return. But you're right. The MLB for an MLB team just to start, like the Athletics. You know, you're not guaranteed to get people in those seats. You're not guaranteed to sell merchandise and all that, those other things. So. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a tough sell. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, No, that's what I'm saying. It's like the opposite. Like, People would rather already... I mean, the, the A's already have a, a legacy. They already have history. I mean, you just mm-hmm. slap Las Vegas on there, and you're the toast of a town. Yeah. So uh, that's what I'm saying. They're going to tank hard. It'd be cheap. Mm-hmm. It'd be easy. They have people that would want to spend money because it's baseball. It's Americana. It's America's favorite pastime. And yeah, I mean, like, I mean, like I said, it'd be it'd be easier, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, um. Sadly. <laughs> I know, right? But uh, yeah. Um, keeping in the in the AL West, uh, the Houston Astros, defending champions, a uh, a little bit of a slow start. Ooh. <laughs> a little bit of a slow start, but I think they'll they'll start turning it around in a bit. I mean, they still have a lot of good players on their teams, to my knowledge. So. I don't think they're they're going to be going anywhere soon. I mean, like I said, it's still the beginning. Let me see who is the hot man right now. Looking at my stats, uh, batting average right now. You got a dub in at point point forty home runs. You got a Tucker with four RBIs. You got a I think his name is Johnny Alvarez with twenty, which is pretty good. On base percentage goes to Tucker once again with a point four four. Four point four four four, and Dubin leads with hits. Uh, you're getting support in other other players, not usually, not Brayu, uh, not Pena, not Bregman. So yeah, I mean, the, I think you you just have to wait for them to start heating up again. Uh, and then the Los Angeles Angels still up in the air on what will happen to one Shohei Otani. But I think him and uh and Trout, I mean, they had to make up. They play on the same team after the World Baseball World World Baseball Classic. Uh, let me see. A uh, Trout has already driven in twelve runs. Where is he? Otani has already driven in ten. Otani already has seventeen hits. Trout has fifteen hits. Let me see. Where is home runs? Otani was three home runs. Trout has already has three. Surprisingly, they're not the leading home run hitters right now. It's a uh, how do you say this guy's name? Hit Logan. Ohop Ohapi. Never heard of him, um, <laughs> but uh, mm-hmm. but yeah. Um, hopefully they. I mean the Angels second in the AL West, so good on them. Uh, currently at the record, currently as of this recording, I think they're in Boston or New York, one of those two. They're in the wet. They're in the East Coast right now. Um, I'm a little bit shocked on the Mariners who, you know, clawed their way into the into the um playoffs last season. So we'll have to see going into summer how they are after the All Star game, because that's where everyone starts turning it around, basically. Um, Dan, do you have anything to add in regards to the AL um, portion of our MLB update news update? No, nothing <laughs> other than 
the Astros suck. Oh, okay, Hope good. they stay down. Bruh. <laughs> Alrighty then. Um, moving into the National League now. Um, we got the Milwaukee. No, excuse me. I was like, my screen was acting all weird. Uh, in the NL National League East, we have the Atlanta Braves, uh, the 2021 uh, World Series champions. Uh, the Braves, 13 and four currently. Uh, then behind them, we have the New York Mets, who uh, who lost Edwin Diaz in the World Baseball Classic uh, in a freak accident, uh, celebrating with his teammates. He's out for the season. Uh, quick re- hopes for a quick recovery for him. And hey, you never know, maybe he'll come back. Uh, but they're behind the Braves, eleven and six. Then we have the Marlins at ten and eight. Then the Phillies, seven and ten. Uh, I, I kind of thought the Phillies would have had a, a better start than the Nationals, who are just down in the dumps at five and eleven, which is pretty bad. Uh, but yeah, the the Braves making noise as always, and uh, then the the Mets. I don't know, man. I've been hearing a lot of stuff. I always see through the social media. One of the hardest things to do is be a Mets fan because it's the, as uh, Ted Lasso likes to say, it's the hope that kills you. So I always see the the goofy TikTok Instagrams where it's like, if you date a guy and he's a Mets fan, you know he's a keeper because he wouldn't quit on you because he never quits on the Mets. <laughs> <laughs> but he's uh, got yeah. no pulse, he won't stop. No, yeah, basically. So let's see where the, the Mets go uh, into the rest of the season. Being behind the Braves, maybe they'll get into the first spot in the NL East. Uh, moving forward, we have the National League Central with another good team with the Milwaukee Brewers at 12-5. and five. Then behind them, it does kind of go downhill. Well, actually, that's kind of weird. Uh, Chicago Pubs are 9-6, and six, but then the Pittsburgh Pirates are 10-7. and seven? Wait, what? The Pirates? More losses. The Pirates? The fuck? Is that new? A new team? No, the Pirates have just been dog water the past like five years. Oh. Oh, like it, it, it's even gone to the point where fans want the owner to sell the team. <laughs> but all right, all right, the Pirates making a comeback. Yeah. I think they got uh maybe, maybe it's not updated. No, no, no. I think it's because it's have, they have more losses. Oh no, this is ESPN, bro. Oh, I'm looking on the ESPN's version of the of the standings, and which it says at the bottom, standings are updated with the completion of each game. Yeah. All right. So. Let me see. I gotta check something. I need to see who is on the Pirates lineup because. Let me see. Oh yeah, they do have Andrew McCutcheon back. Yeah, I knew I wasn't tripping. Who the hell is this? Who's leading them in home runs? Brian Reynolds. Wow. I don't Brian know Reynolds is. playing baseball. No, Brian Reynolds. <laughs> You're a fool. <laughs> He's leading them in home runs, batting average, and RBIs, and an on base percentage goes to. One ye old Andrew McCutcheon, point four eighteen, which is pretty good. Oh, Brian Reynolds even Reynolds even leads them in hits with twenty two. All right, I guess <laughs> that's pretty good though. But yeah, I'm like the Pirates, the hell. But all right, um, behind them we got the St. Louis Cardinals, who I think they're gonna be like the Seattle Sounders of the MLB, as in they always start off super duper slow. But they pick it on halfway through the season and make it into the playoffs like nothing. We call that the boogie magic, because they <laughs> they because they always yeah it's true because they always get into the playoffs. And their home records they fuck shit up. Like they've done it to the Dodgers, they've done it to I mean I mean I'm a Dodger guy so I mean I've seen it firsthand, and it sucks ass. Mm. But also the Dodgers always like yeah. to uh, choke so. But um, <laughs> oh my God. But it's true. Like I've seen them do it You're to right. other teams. So, I mean, it is what it is. So we have to see where the cards go from here. And then, the Reds, who used to be a scary opponent, pitching wise, down at the bottom in the Central, seven and ten. But it is what it is. And then finally, uh, in the MLB, in the NL West, we got the Diamondbacks in first at ten and seven, the Dodgers eight and nine. The Padres, little brother, eight and ten. Uh, the San Francisco Giants, the bastards, at five and eleven. Then the <laughs> Rockies at five and twelve. So, Danny, last time I checked, you have a little soft spot for the Diamondbacks. Is that or not? Is that true or no? Um, the only soft spot is I got family in Arizona. So, 
I guess kind of. Li- and they like the Diamondbacks, correct? One of them does. Okay, there you go. That was, that was my, that was my me- trying to jog my memory. Yeah. Okay, I remember specifically we went out one time and you said, "Oh yeah, go Diamondbacks." I was like, "The fuck, you don't even watch baseball." <laughs> <laughs> I know two teams. Diamondbacks, Dodgers. But you've been to an Angels game. Yeah, oh yeah, been. I have been to an Angels game. Yeah, you yeah. big liar. <clears throat> That's true. Tisk tisk. Why are you why are you downplaying why are you downplaying yourself? Okay, all right. I'm a baseball <laughs> fan, man. I got you. I've been to a Dodgers game too. No, yeah, I know. Like, I feel like with baseball, like we're we're not gonna always be covering it because, like I said, I-, I love me some baseball, but it's hard to follow in the case that we're following other things already on our agenda. Yeah. But I mean, like, once I start getting into it, I'm like, okay, this is the DRAs, the hitting percentages. Like, okay, like it comes back to me naturally. But right now, we're just kind of, you know, I, I would say like nonchalantly, just like going through the standings and giving our opinion, well, my opinion on the teams. Um, mm-hmm. but uh, in regards to the NL West, uh, the Diamondbacks. I mean, I am a little bit surprised. Um, usually it's the Dodgers. I mean, the Dodgers always ninety five percent of the time have control of the West. Yeah. But um, it looks like the Diamondbacks are. Are making some noise right now in the beginning of the race. Uh, let me see who's this. J. Josh Rojas, who leads the team on batting average three point three forty seven home runs, is a uh, where's his name? Corbin Carroll with four RBIs. We got a uh, Christian Walker. Sorry, I'm pressing the names to see. It just gives me initials. OBP is Rojas again on base percentage three point eighty nine, and Rojas again with seventeen hits. So, whenever I see, like, stat lines where it's, like, multiple people leading in a category, that just makes me think that they have, like, a a semi-good all-around team in regards to everyone's kind of doing something different that's, like, helping the team. You get what I'm saying, Danny? Yep. So, it's not all bad. So, maybe that's what's working right now. I mean, like I said, still only in the beginning, 10-7. and seven. Behind them is the Dodgers at 8-9, and nine, the Padres 8-10, eight, eight and 10, the Giants 5-11. And the Rock, like I said the Rockies five and twelve, but what's going on with the Giants, man? I mean, like that's weird. Uh, I mean, I would expect the Giants. I mean, they. I don't think they've offloaded a lot of people. I mean, I think if they they're were showing their up, true colors, Robert. I mean, I guess let them be. I, Let I sleeping mean, they, dogs lie, man. They had that good season not too long ago where they won the NL West, outpaced the Dodgers. But I guess right now it's just not happening for them. It's a JD Davis, yeah, JD Davis basically leading in RBIs, leading in home runs, and leading in um in a batting average at point three forty seven. But uh, yeah, I guess uh, nothing's happening for them right now. Um, it's kind of odd to see low key. I mean, the Padres they were still missing uh what's his face um, dang it, I am forgetting his name, <laughs> and people are gonna hate me now. I don't care. It's probably gonna be all Padres fans, anyways. Um, <laughs> I'm forgetting his name. Oh, Fernando Tatis Jr., who's I think he's in like their second division team right now, because he got suspended for like 50 games for uh, like uh, I was about to say a different word, but it's not that illegal substance, whatever. So oh, I think man. I think that's his suspension. But uh, yeah, oh, he got in August. Tatis was suspended for 80 games. After testing positive for a banned substance, there you go. Roiding up. The set the suspension and en- ensured Tatis would miss the entire 2022 season after he spent the first four months rehabbing a fractured left wrist. I do remember now he was hurt when they found that out. That's crazy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think that's it really. Um, wait, what the ESPN just posted this article. The Padres lineup looks like okay. What does the Padres? Okay, I mean yeah, I guess their lineup's gonna be stacked once uh, once his face comes back. But I guess that's that's if he comes back at the same as he's doing. I mean he's I know I've seen he's hitting a lot of home runs right now. So, but yeah, um yeah, if you want to check out this ESPN article, um, it is titled "What Padres Lineup Looks Like with Fernando Tatis Jr." So yeah, I mean they're gonna have Machado, they're gonna have um. I was about to say some other words. Not Rendo. Juan Soto. I don't know why. Well, yeah, Juan Soto, uh, Xander Bogarts, and yeah, it was Tatis. Those four. Yeah, Tatis, Machado, 
Bogarts, Soto. Yeah, it should be a should be a good stack lineup for them. So we'll have to see what happens. Um, let me see. Is Trent Grissom still here? I think he is. Um, but yeah, I think that's it really in regards to anything I have to add. Dan, do you have anything to add in regards to the MLB's National League? No, I do not. Are you sure? Or Dodgers. Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, all right. I watched the end of the Dodgers game the other day. Look, see, you liar. Uh, I did. No, I watched it. I watched yeah, I know, uh, no, I'm saying you lie. I asked you, you have anything else to say, and you're like, no. Oh, my bad. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the Dodgers versus the Chicago Cubs. Um, 1-0, bottom of the ninth. I saw the uh, the double, the the two homers that uh, walked off the Dodger victory at the end. Pretty exciting stuff. Really fun uh, moment to watch. It's pretty cool. Oh, see, there you go. That's all you had to say. <laughs> I did see the, the walk-off as well. It was against uh, the Cubs, I believe. Yep, Chicago Cubs. Uh, with the returning uh, Cody Bellinger. I think he hit a home run in one of these games in the series. So that was cool. Yeah, pretty cool. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad you were able to uh, watch some America's uh, pastime for a bit. Yeah, I mean, I think baseball is very much an in-person sport. Yeah. Watching it on TV is not the same as going into the stadium. If you can, make it out to a baseball game. Um, it's awesome to be there. If you happen to be in the Southern California area, go out to a Friday night lights Dodger night. Cause they do like fireworks and, Oh, I don't know if they do fireworks anymore, but they do like a drone show, which I heard is oh, pretty cool. That's pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, you have anything else to add in regards to anything baseball related? No, not that I can think of. Oh, okay. Um, just really quick. Um, the games have been slimmed down by a bit. According to the MLB, they have been slimmed down by 30 minutes due to the new pitch clock rule in regards to batters being in the batter's box and the pitchers being in their pitching position as the pit, as the batter is being prepared to bat. So yeah, we're looking at at least two hour and 30 minute games now, which is pretty good. So gone are the days where you can show up at the third inning and see a two and a half hour game from that point on. So, oh my God. Yeah, it's true. That's why, that's like, crazy. I mean, even uh, some of the players were like, I think they're gonna have to pull back on the um, like the no alcohol. Cause I think they used to cut alcohol like at the seventh inning, but that was when yeah. like the game was barely at two hours and 30 minutes or whatever, two hours plus. Yeah, because that the whole point to cut off the alcohol is to have everyone kind of sober up. Yeah, so gone are those days. So, I recommend getting to the game at least at the first inning. Like yeah, not when get the not at for, yeah not at first pitch, but get there at least when once right when the game starts because that way you'll yeah. be in your seat at the third inning. Okay, if you're showing up at the third inning and you're missing the fourth or the fifth, like okay, like that was cool when there was no pitch clock, but now there's a pitch clock, so you gotta get there at least at the first or the second. Yep. To at least like settle down, and then then you get then you in your seat at the third inning. Does that make any sense? <laughs> yeah, it makes a lot of sense, man. But uh, yeah, that's what's been going on in the league. I mean, there's been mixed opinions. Uh, I think some pitchers are taking advantage of it because they, they all they do, they basically just they'll set themselves so they don't give any time to the batter, and the batter gets a strike. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, and if not, the and vice versa, if the pitcher takes long, the batter gets a ball. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean. I mean, I haven't gone to a game yet, so I'm hoping to go out to a game sometime and to check it out. But uh, I mean, I'm glad the games are going to fucking take four hours and end at one in the morning. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, mean. Uh, the only other rule that's been going around is the I haven't seen no one talk about the the no more. Uh, how would you say the um, the shift rule? Basically, you're not allowed to. You know what I'm talking about, Dan? You couldn't have like more than three. You can't have. You got. You have to have two people on each side of second base. That you can't I don't know have. what you mean, but okay. So basically, so like you know how the shortstop kind of can roam around. Yeah. So you can't have the shortstop like hop on both sides or have your second 
you can't have your first, second, and shortstop all on one side, basically. Or you can't even have everybody all on one side of the of the of the field, basically. You get what I'm saying? Oh, okay. I think I see what you mean. Yeah. So let's say you just wanted to have your third baseman on first base in the middle mm-hmm. with the shortstop because you're going up against the lefty. Mm-hmm. So you can't have everybody on right field because you're facing a lefty, basically. You I mean, that's kind of weird. Yeah. So you can't okay. shift like that no more. Yeah. So you have to have an even number of players on the field, yeah. on on get, in between the second base, basically. I guess it gives them a way for uh for the offense to score, but yes, um, or more live balls, basically. Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I know, like, see, I told you, if once I get into baseball, I get into baseball. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't believe me, huh? Yep. No, I believe you. I believe you, buddy. Oh, sorry, I had to stretch there for a second. <laughs> no worries, man. But, uh, yeah, um, you're good? We can move on now? Yes, sir. All right. We're right. If you're prepared, we're going to do the warm-up in which I would just give a quick update, in my opinion, upon the UEFA Champions League. Um, I know we missed last week. Oopsie doopsie. Uh I mean like I said we we were busy so we just kinda did the the podium show on the on basketball. I mean I mean it was I think it was rightly warranted, correct, Danny? That we had that we do an NBA podium show. Yeah, I think so. I think uh clock was ticking on it. We just had to do one. Yeah. But and I I say I apologize, we were a little bit busy, so I'm like, let's just do this one show and do all basketball. Yep. But uh yeah. Moving on to some footy in the warm up. Uh we're in the almost semifinals. <laughs> Here, let me double check what they call these. Uh, UEFA Champions League uh, tournament. Uh, yeah, the quarterfinals. As of this recording, Real Madrid beat Chelsea 2-0 on the away leg, in which they won on aggregate 4-0. Napoli lost. I repeat that. Lost to Milan on aggregate 2-1. In which Napoli and Milan ended 1-1 in the second. And Milan won the first game 1-0. Surprisingly in my opinion. Uh, as of this recording. Next up we have Bayern against Man City. In which I have uh, Man City winning that game. Because they're already up 3-0 on aggregate. But they're playing at Bayern. Bayern Munich. In which crazy shit has happened. So we have to wait and see what happens between these two teams. But I think Man City is going to just hold on. And I mean. Man City stacked. You got. De Bruyne, you got um. I'm forgetting his name now. <laughs> I always do this. I'll always be like, "Oh yeah, so and so," and then I forget people's names. Um, you got Jack Grealish on their squad as well. And then, let me see. Going to the stats, Erling Haaland, who has 32 goals on the season for the Prem. I don't. I don't see him stopping now. Uh, in the Champions League. Let me see. Where is that? You went for Champions League. Uh, Holland has 11 goals in Champions League, so I don't see him stopping anytime soon. So Bayern's going to have to find a way to get goals out of this game. Obviously, they're down 3-0 going into the game. It's going to have it's going to take a, a, a real miracle and a lot of crazy nonsense to uh, get them this win. Uh, and then in the last game that's going to be happening, we got Inter Milan and Benfica. Uh, Benfica traveling to Inter Milan. Inter Milan already leading 2-0 on the aggregate score. Uh, I don't think Benfica is going to be able to make any noise. I know they're a, a good opponent to play. They usually make deep runs in Champions League, but I don't think it's going to happen for them this time. I think Milan's going to move on and defeat them. And then uh, the next games in the semis, uh, M- Milan is either going to play like, or Inter Mo- no. AC Milan, excuse me. The hell? Did I say Inter Milan earlier? Oops, sorry. AC Milan. I should have wrote that better. AC Milan is either going to face either Inter Milan or Benfica, according to uh, UEFA Champions League's website. And then Real Madrid is either going to face Man City or Bayern Munich. Uh, and then those games will take place uh, May 9th and May 10th for the first legs, and then May 16th and May 17th for the second leg. Uh, more information will be... Uh, released upon UEFA's discretion but that was the information I was able to find in regards to the scheduling of these games because obviously we haven't gotten there yet but moving on back to Chelsea and Madrid in which 
Madrid just manhandled Chelsea, who, in desperation, hired Frank Lampard as their head coach, in my opinion. In desperation, hired him because well, this is like their third coach in the past couple of months. It's just not happening. They can't do anything. They're mid-table team in the Premier League ship. And you're playing Madrid, who, although everyone has their doubts, including myself, who, I mean, I'll go on to this podcast and say, I- I've always doubted this team, have always found ways to win. And they just keep fighting. They just have this grit that of just never giving up, even when, er- when the chips are down on them. They find ways to score. They find ways to tire out teams and get into positions of havoc and finding getting the ball in the back of their opponent's net. So Chelsea, who I, I, I honestly thought maybe they were going to turn something on. They're playing at home. I thought I honestly thought they would be able to get at least a goal or two and to get them going, to get the, you know, to make a comeback in, in the second leg. And it just never happened. They let the first goal come in. Um, they were both scored by Rodrigo in the 58th minute. And then in the 80th minute, I'm like, all right, they're, these fools aren't going to do shit. Like, like, they're not scary. Like, dude, they spent so much money, like, on this team. Like, it's fucking ridiculous. You have Joao Felix, Kai Havertz, Reese James. Uh, who's that? The one... The one guy I think they got from the Bundes, Mikhailo Murdick, dude, like, oh man, it's just, it's terrible. You have, I, I don't know, Danny. It's just, I would, I, if, if one of my prior co-hosts was here, Alondra, who's been on the show a few times already, she's really into Chelsea. She would probably agree with me. Like, it's just ridiculous that this team who they spent money, they're literally throwing money at the problem and it's not working it's like dude like you guys gotta figure out something that will you know get you guys to where you want to go like you guys are not going anywhere doing the same shit and it's just a travesty to just see these guys looking at the stats they had 54 54 percent of position against madrid who i think what their strategy is sit back don't park the bus but wait in the waters See these guys goof up, take advantage, come on a counter, create destruction in the box, and that's how they that's how they were to find their goals in this game. And especially seeing that it was Rodrigo who put the two balls in the back of the net, it's like damn, like I won't even say that fool was like kind of like how you were saying about Russell Westbrook. He's not bad. Like I'm not saying this guy's like him, but he was impactful when you needed him. And I see what you mean. Yeah. Cause like, and he comes off the bench most of the time as well, and it's just like, damn, like, like Real Madrid was just, I want, cause I don't like, I feel like Real Madrid's starting eleven is like really good, but mm-hmm. I wouldn't say that their bench is too scary, but you could tell in regards to Chelsea and Real Madrid, it's like Real Madrid was good, was ten times better. I mean, I was looking at social media, I was on Twitter, and people were just saying, Chelsea, just give, don't even play these next two games. Just give it to them. And yeah, 4-0 on aggregate. Like, you guys couldn't even get a goal. In two games, Danny, in between two games, they couldn't score a goal. (laughs) Scored us over two games. Crazy. Yeah, it's like, oh, like, dude. I mean, and and I haven't even mentioned this other guy's name. I haven't even mentioned Pulisic's name yet. I don't even think it's even, like, affordable to even mention his name. It's... He doesn't. I don't know, man. It's just terrible. I mean, oh, I just remembered looking at the prior, prior scoreline. I mean, you were down a guy as well. You lost Ben Chilwell, who, who's another good guy, as a starting role. It's it's laughable, Danny. It's it it, it makes no sense. What do I don't you know think? what to say, man. I don't know. I think I think we already talked about. Teams like this were buying just because all these players are good individually. When you put them on the same team, doesn't mean you know. Just like in the Lakers, just like any other like super team composition, it just won't won't work. It's not guaranteed to work, you know. No, yeah, that's why I'm like, it's 
it's not working, dude. They're going to yeah. have to do something. They only need a new coach as well. You're not going to do jack shit with Frank Lampard. Are you fucking kidding me? This is some fucking Ted Lasso type of shit. Y'all going to try to tank? Tank? Y'all get kicked out. If you tank, you go to second division. What the fuck you guys doing? Like, I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Like I'm getting, I'm losing brain cells thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I used to talk more about the Champions League. Um, I think I guess you could say the upset of the tournament was uh AC Milan uh beating Napoli two to one on aggregate. Olivier Giroud getting into the semis, bro, dude. That's crazy. I mean, I, I thought maybe it was like a fluke because Napoli's been turning it up. And the city of all in the Italian league, um, I believe they they've won, they've run away with the title, in the in the Italian league. Uh, let me see, does it say points? Yeah, in the Italian league, they're up seventy five points. Uh, the second place team has 60, 61 points, so they got what like a. I was about to say, no, I'm like tripping. What like thirteen? No, I'm ta- I'm bad at math. What's seventy five take away sixty one? <laughs> Um, I don't know. It's plus ten. They're they're way ahead. No one's gonna catch them. I mean, it didn't help. I mean, it helped out as well that Juventus got got dinged f- minus fifteen points for illegal whatever they did. And yeah, they kind of just ran away with the title at this point. I don't think Juventus was gonna be catch up anyway. But dude, that's crazy that these guys were able to to do this to them, and in the Champions League. So. Let's see what happens. Uh, let me see. What did I say? Who's going to face who? Um, oh, yeah. So, AC Milan is going to play intern. Then, Real Madrid is going to play Bayern or Man City. So, you're basically going to have AC Milan versus Inter Milan, Danny. Uh, I don't know. I know you don't understand this, but they're rivals, and they play in the same stadium. Right, row. So, and this is... I think oh dang, I wish I I wish I had this up. So there's a, a TikTok Instagram, they're like, dang, in two thousand and nine the AC Milan, Inter Milan rivalry didn't have to go this hard. So you had like David Beckham, Ronaldinho, you had Kaka. You had like a bunch of like notable faces on the field. You had oh dang I'm afraid you had two notable coach you have the the coach of Real Madrid right now and you had um dang I'm afraid the other guy's name. Uh, he used to coach uh, Manchester United. He everyone hated him, but yeah, like there's like hell of people. So it's gonna be interesting this time around with AC Milan possibly going up against their longtime rival Inter Milan. So that'd be a good game to watch. And Real Madrid versus what I want. I think I have Man City playing. Uh, moving on, so that should be another good game. Let's see how Man City handles Real Madrid. Who's let's let's be honest, guys. They're probably gonna win it. Come on. But that's what I'm saying. Like it'd be a, a shocker if Real Madrid does not move on in the Champions League. But uh, yeah, I think I digress now. I think that's everything I have on, off the top of my head, Danny, for our warm up. Are you ready to move on now? Unless you have anything else to add. Let's go into the rundown, baby. Alrighty then. In the rundown this week, uh, we have our mission because we didn't record the past two weeks of our regular rambling runoff programming. Uh. UConn won NCAA March Madness Championship. Danny, what do you think about that? Uh, the championship was kind of disappointing, to be honest. Well, because your pick uh, lost. Yeah, my pick did lose. <laughs> but, I mean, the game overall was a bit of a disappointment. Um, you know, you thought it would be a closer contest, but, um, yeah. UConn came out as a... The better team, dominantly, I should say, and uh, they were able to uh, to win a uh, NCAA championship. Let's see, there you go. Congratulations to UConn. Yeah. And by the way, Danny has yet to take his shot yet. Yeah, very true. We still got to get out there. <laughs> it's very true. Hold um, me accountable. No, yeah, I got you, Ka. Um, moving on now. Uh, the U.S. men's national team uh, this week. Uh, whenever you're listening to it. May have already played Mexico in the. What are they calling this? The. I oh think I had it. I had it ran down and it's gone. Well, this is the 75th edition of USA versus Mexico. 
uh, it's set for April 19th at 10.22 p.m. Eastern. You can catch the game on TBS, HBO Max, Peacock, and then for in Spanish, you can find it on Telemundo and Universo, which is like the streaming service, basically. Um, I'm looking for a good game. It's not in the international window, so I think I've mentioned the the lineup elsewhere, I believe. So hopefully the team does well against their longtime rivals because, I mean, it's, it's a big rivalry, so, I mean, why wouldn't you want to, you know, show out and do a good job? Uh, I know, I think, yeah, I think I've already gone over the lineup, so I think it was on uh, out of our own end zone with the homie Alex. Uh, we went over the the call-ups. But, uh, yeah, I'm hoping for a good game. Uh, hopefully they uh, get it done. Oh, it's called the All-State Continental Classico. So, let's see where it goes. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to see Sean Johnson uh, get the starting role. You're going to see Sergio Des, Julian Gressel, Matt Miazga, Shaq Moore, Caleb Wiley, uh, who's been tearing it up. Josh, Joshua Winder, who was making his start. I, I've never heard of him, but apparently he's a really young kid. And he's really good, so I hope to see him do good uh, with the U.S. Men's National Team getting his first start, first cap. Um, in the midfield, you're going to get Kellen Acosta, Aiden Morris, Christian Roldan, James Sands, Alan Sonora, Jackson Yule. Up front, you're going to get Paul Ariola, Kate Cow, Jesus Ferreira, Jordan Morris, Brandon Vasquez, who's doing really well in Cincy right now. And uh, yeah, I'm just looking for a good game. I hope the USA comes out and uh, takes the W in this edition of the All-State Continental Classico, not sponsored. Danny, who do you think is going to win this game? USA, USA, USA. Perfect. That's what you're supposed to say. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, from international football, we go to American football, uh, in which the USFL has finally debuted once again in the United States. Um, I didn't was able to, unable to watch any of the games, but I'm just gonna go over some of the score lines of this first opening weekend. So on Saturday, April fifteenth, we have the Philadelphia Stars. Defeat the Memphis Showboats twenty-seven to twenty-three. Uh, that was at that game was at Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium in Memphis, Tennessee. Then uh, the second game on Saturday, that Saturday, we had the Birmingham Stallions against the New Jersey Generals. The final score was Stallions twenty-seven, Generals ten. That game was at Pro- Protective Stadium in Birmingham, Alabama. Then on Sunday, we also had two games again. Um, so we had the Michigan Panthers against the Houston Gamblers, twenty-nine to thirteen, in favor of Michigan. Then the second game we had the New Orleans Breakers against the Pittsburgh Maulers, in which the Breakers were victorious, twenty-two to fifteen. Uh, I would repeat the name of the stadium again, but uh, the way they're doing the USFL right now, they're only playing. They're not playing at their home stadium. Does that make any sense, Danny? They're playing like in a bubble. Oh, interesting. So all the teams are in like one or one or two areas. So it's not mm. like, oh, we're going to go to Michigan or we're going to go to Houston. Like mm. the, the like whatever amount of teams that they have right now, they're only playing in like one or two areas. Interesting. Yeah, I know. It's kind of a little bit different. Yeah. But um, I guess they're, they're going to, I think it's just economically, it just makes more sense for them to have it all in one location. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Um, for the USFL in Week Two, Saturday, April twenty second. Uh, if you're looking to watch those games at nine thirty a.m. PDT on USA Network, uh, you have the Gamblers against the or the New Orleans Breakers. Then on Fox as a second game, we got the Memphis Showboats and the Birmingham Stallions. Sorry if I'm like mumbling over my words. I'm still getting used to these team names. Then on Sunday on the 23rd, we got the New Jersey Generals against the Pittsburgh Maulers. You can find that on NBC and Peacock. Then the second game of the day, uh, we got the Michigan Panthers against the Philadelphia Stars on FS1. So if you're interested in some more tackle football, go check out the USFL. It should be fun if you're a very enjoyable person of the game of tackle football. Uh, If you want more football, uh, this is going to be the last couple of games for the XFL. Because uh, then after that, they're going to be going into uh, to basically their playoffs, their, edition, their rendition of a postseason. 
uh, for week 10, I'm just going to go over the games. On April 22nd, uh, the Orlando Guardians will be playing at the St. Louis Battlehawks. You can catch that game at 12 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, ESPN+. Plus. Then we also have the D.C. Defenders at the San Antonio Brahmas. Uh, 3 p.m. Eastern, ABC, ESPN+, Plus, ESPN Deportes. We also have, on Sunday, the Houston Roughnecks at the Arlington Renegades at 3 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, ESPN+. Plus. Then the final game will be the Vegas Vipers at the Seattle Sea Dragons, 7 p.m. Eastern, ESPN2, ESPN+. Plus. And then after that, um, according to the XFL's website, they will have a South Division Championship in which a team to be determined will play at the Houston Roughnecks on Saturday, April 29th at 7 p.m. Eastern. You can catch the game on ESPN2, ESPN Plus, or ESPN Deportes. Then they also have a North Division Championship with a to-be-determined opponent at the DC Defenders on Sunday, April 30th at 3 p.m. Eastern, ESPN, ESPN Plus, and ESPN Deportes. And then to wrap it all up, the winner from those two games and the XFL Championship will play on Saturday, May 13th at 8 p.m. Eastern at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. And the final will be aired on ABC and ESPN Deportes. I don't know, Danny. It sounds a little bit exciting. What do you think? I will watch one of those. No, yeah. I think I might catch the final because I want to see the best football played, which is why I haven't really watched XFL or even the USFL at this point. Because, yeah, it's a little bit rough to watch when you have... No offense, these guys are well more skilled than me and you ever will be. Oh, but definitely. In quality of NFL to, I guess you could say, lower division size. And I know, poor choice of words, but lower tier play. You know, you want to see the best stuff. So maybe we'll try to pick out the final. Maybe we'll do like a live tweeting or something of some sort for the final. How does that sound, Danny? Yeah, sounds awesome. Because what did I say? When's the, the 13th? Oh, not my calculator, on my calendar. <laughs> um, it is, oh, it's a Saturday. Okay, cool, perfect. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens then. But uh, yeah, um, good luck to uh, all those teams that may or may not be going into the postseason in the XFL. And then Danny, we got some NASCAR news for you as well. Here we go. Uh, Kyle Larson wins at Martinsville Speedway and the NOCO 400. I have no stats to give you, but your homie with the big hat did not win, unfortunately. No. Um, I think, I think this might have been the dude's car that caught on fire, low key though. <laughs> oh, I really? See, oh shit! I did see a, a clip. Someone won a race, or I don't know what it was, but his car caught on fire. Like, but while he was doing the donuts, let me see. Was it Kyle Larson? I'm looking up on their Instagram right now. Someone's car was on fire. Damn. Let me see. Oh, no, I think it was one of the other races. But, yeah, his car, he won the race, and his car just lit Oh, his name is John Hunter. Oh, John Hunter Nemechek. Yeah, his car caught on fire as he was doing, like, the donuts and stuff. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. Like, the whole, like, if you go on Instagram, Dan, on that, yeah, if you go on NASCAR's Instagram, his whole back left tire is on fire. Damn. So, like, there's, like, better. clips. Yeah, the, the whole thing, like, engulfed into flames, basically. Jesus. <laughs> He's leaving, like, streaks of flame, dude. Dude, that's crazy. That's crazy. No, but yeah. Um, What what race was this, anyway? This was the... Oh, before you dig 250. Okay. It was, like, a like a smaller... It was, like, one of the smaller races. But, yeah, Kyle Larson won the... um. The NOCO 400. So, good on him. Um... Yeah, it was at Martinsville, which is a pretty popular uh, stadium. Not a stadium, but racetrack to uh, to go to. Uh, moving, well, not moving on, but in regards to NASCAR, uh, the next race will be the Tally, at Tally, Talladega Speedway in Alabama for the Geico 500. You catch that on April 23rd at 3 p.m. Eastern, live on Fox. We'll let you know the results of that, of course, on our Rambling Runoff programming next week. Um... NFL news, next week is the NFL draft, uh, Thursday, April 27th to Saturday, April 29th. Uh, I can't give you any details on who I think is going where because I just haven't been following it, if I'm being honest. I know Danny hasn't been following it as well. But uh, just to let you know, yeah, it's Thursday, April 27th 
to the 29th on Saturday. The first round will begin at 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, it will be aired on ESPN, uh, ES, uh, NFL Network. So make sure you catch it on there. I think it's also going to be on ABC at some point. I think they usually do multicast. But uh, yeah, the 2023 NFL Draft will take place in Kansas City, Missouri, downtown area, surrounding Union Station and the National World War One Museum and Memorial. So if you happen to be in that area, go check it out. Should be a fun time. But uh, I'll give you the top five uh, draft picks at this moment unless anything changes. Uh, number one is going to be the Carolina Panthers who got that spot from the Chicago Bears. Then after that, number two, we got the Houston Texans. Number three, Arizona Cardinals. Number four, the Indianapolis Colts. And coming in at number five, getting the pick from the Denver Broncos, the Seattle Seahawks. So, whew, we're going to have a, a good fun time at the draft as always. Danny, are you going to maybe try to catch some of this or no? You're good. I'll probably catch you know, the first handful of picks. I might not go into the later rounds, but. No, yeah. I think usually the first rounds are like the most important rounds to uh, yep. to check in on. I mean, was, I mean, you could. You could check in to see when the when the Cincinnati Bengals draft a, a kicker they're not going to use. Yep. Basically, that's basically it. <laughs> no, no hate on the Bengals or any kickers, but that's just the truth of the matter. Yeah. No, it's a fact. It's just, unless you're going to get a Tom Brady, then that's a different story. But uh, winding down now as the last topic, which I keep neglecting. It's not on purpose, guys. I swear. NHL, the National Hockey League, has officially begun its postseason, which I promised we would do more hockey. I just keep forgetting. I just, I don't know why. I just, it hasn't come to me. So... Just to run through who's facing who, um, in the first round, we have the Colorado Avalanche versus the Seattle Krakens. Then we have the Dallas Stars going up against the Minnesota Wild. We have the Las Vegas Golden Knights against the Winnipeg Jets. Then we have the Oilers against um, the why am I blanking? The Los Angeles Kings. Why did I like black out for a second? The Edmonton Oilers. Against the Los Angeles Kings. And then on the other side of the bracket. We got the Boston Bruins going up against the Florida Panthers. We got the Toronto Maple Leafs going up against the Tampa Bay Lightning. We have the... Are they called the... Why is my thing not cooperating? Um, where are they at? Do, 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 do. Dang it. Hold on. This is embarrassing. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Don't laugh yet, Danny. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on my breath. <laughs> it's the Cyclones. I think it's the Carolina Cyclones. I don't know why it's not showing me on the NHL's website. What is wrong with you guys? But all right. But yeah, it's... And my thing froze. Okay, perfect. Um, Yeah, it's the Cyclones. Hold on. I got to pull it up somewhere else. Sorry, everybody. Technical difficulties. We're going to do this live, okay? <laughs> no cuts, no edits. National <laughs> Hockey League. We have, let me see where you at. Da, da, da. Even when I'm looking for it, I can't find it. It's still evading me. I hate this. Dang it. I had it. Where are you guys at? Yes, the Carolina Hurricanes. Gosh, I was about to call them the Cyclones and not call the fucking Hurricanes. <laughs> but yeah. Um, and then we had, they were going, the Carolina Hurricanes are going up against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And then we have the wrap it up on the side of the bracket. We have the New Jersey Devils going up against the New York Rangers. So if you haven't yet, go check out some playoff hockey. It should be a good time. I already saw as of this recording, the the Kings were down, I think, 2-0 or 3-0 going into the third period. They scored three goals to send into overtime. And then in OT, they were able to get the game winner, winning the game 4-3. So if that doesn't excite you, I don't know what else. Yeah, I know, right? So I'll, if, if that doesn't excite you, I don't know what will. So make sure you go and check out some, some NHL hockey. It should be fun. Uh, you catch the games, I believe, on TNT or TBS and um, ESPN as well. Yeah, TBS, ESPN, ESPN2. And yeah, um, that's it basically for our NHL <laughs> playoff update. Sorry, it's not as detailed as our NBA coverage, but uh, we're getting there. We're working on it. I mean, I post stuff on Instagram and Twitter, so 
if you're looking for the scores and any type of highlights, go check out our socials there. But uh, yeah, um, that's it for the rundown. Danny, do you have anything else to add in regards to the sports world? I got nothing this week. I mean, this is probably the busiest time of year. Um, NBA playoffs start, NHL playoffs, MLB is getting underway. Um, NFL draft is on the way. Um, WNBA is going to kick off. Like this is really quite a busy time of year. I know. I didn't even so. mention MLS or NWSL this time. Yeah. Oh my gosh, man. This, this, this is like the mecca of if you're a sports fanatic, you've got way too much to even like follow. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if, if that's everything, we can start wrapping it up. Yes, sir. All right, then. Thank you for listening to Rambling Runoff. If you're listening on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button and also hit the like button as well. It helps us out a lot. Please, I beg you. Um, <laughs> if you're listening on Spotify, give us a five-star rating. Follow us there. Uh, you can also find our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music for Podcasters, um, Spotify for Podcasters. Um... I don't know. Am I forgetting one? <laughs> oh, Stitcher. Sorry. Sorry to our Stitcher listeners. But uh, yeah, um, if you want to find us more on social media, you can find us on Twitter at Rambling Runoff, Instagram at Rambling Runoff, and also on TikTok at Rambling Runoff. Um, Danny, that's it. That's all you got? Yes, sir. Thank you guys right. for listening. I, I've been your host, Robert Reels, for Danny Tan. See you guys next time. Peace out. Peace. Woo!